Now I'd like to introduce Nigel Bliski. Nigel is the head of viticulture at Torbrek Vineyards, based in Marananga in the Barossa Valley. After graduating from Roseworthy Agricultural College with a Bachelor of Applied Science in Natural Resource Management in 1993, Nigel began his wine career working firstly as a cellar hand with Penfolds and Orlando Wyndham before moving into the vineyards at Jim Barry Wines in 1994. In 1996, after completing a vintage at Leasingham Wines in the Clare Valley, Nigel decided to follow his love of viticulture, completing a graduate certificate in viticulture from the University of Adelaide. Nigel then spent 12 years as a viticulturist for the Yalumba Wine Company, working with their growers and vineyards in both South Australia and Victoria, as well as managing their vine nursery. Nigel joined the Peter Lehman Wines team in November 2008, where his primary task was to liaise with Peter Lehman's Barossa grape growers and also their winemaking team on grape and wine quality. After seven years at Peter Lehman, Nigel took up his current position as head of viticulture at Torbrek Vintners, and he now manages over 100 hectares of vineyard in the Barossa Valley including 22 hectares of old Shiraz, Grenache, Mataro and Semillon vines, which are over 100 years old. Thank you, Nigel. I'll hand over to you now. Thanks, Robin. Um, and thanks for the opportunity to have a talk today. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk from more of a grower's perspective today um, from about you know, the pruning and, and utipa. Uh, and I'm going to use some of our, uh, our own vineyards as examples. Um, let me get started here. Oh, now I can't get it to work. Oh. Okay, so just to give you a little bit of a background on myself um, and the Torbrick Vineyards. So the company uh, vineyards, uh, there's around 84 hectares of vineyard um, and another 24 hectares which we lease. Um, of that area, the, the varieties that we deal with are mainly Shiraz, Grenache, Mataro, a little bit of Samovine, Semillon, and some Viognier, Marsan, Roussan, plus a few others. Um, so as Robin mentioned, we have around 22 hectares of vineyards that are between 80 and 160 years old. Um, and we've got a, a lot of dry grown vineyards. Part of my role when I first started with Torbrek was to plant another 40 hectares of young vineyards. Uh, and we, you know, this, this has been a really good program to, uh, uh, to really understand, you know, the old vines, but also get an opportunity to plant some new vines. Um, to give you an idea why we really, you know, why pruning is important to us, we, have, we are custodians of some of the oldest vineyards in the world, of Shiraz, Grenache, Mutaro uh, and Semillon. And as you can see there, these vines are, uh, are pretty unique um, as a resource. Um, they're amazing old vines. This is some 1850, Shiraz um, planted in our hillside vineyard. Um, and these vines go to our Runrig Shiraz at $300 a bottle. So they're, they're pretty important vines. So, you know, we really are, um, have a, an obligation to really look after these vines. Uh, and so pruning is a really big part of that. Um, just another example of some of the old vineyards that we deal with. And, and this is some of the work uh, that we, we, when we started working with Simonit and Cirque, um, we could see that, 100 years of branching and as you can see we've actually in the last you know 15 years lifted the vines up off the ground retrellised the vineyard uh, and you can see some of the the cuts that have been made in the last 15 years and how they've grown really quickly um just thought i'd throw this slide in this is one of the younger vineyards that we started with has been set up with the sim newton circ method and you know mark made a really good point about how many cuts you need to make you know, increases your risk of disease. And as you can see from here, we've got our two canes and then our two spur positions, which, which will be the future of the vine. So this vine will grow from those spur positions and really grow slowly. So if you look at the, the bottom uh, bud that on those spur positions, that's where the, the next year's spur will be. And the, the bud, the highest bud will be the cane. But again, we will only grow a very short space in that that for that vine and that vine now has a future that starts there so i want to use the descendant vineyard as a bit of an example of um 
of, of where we, we started working with uh, Simonit and Cirque. Um, the vineyard was planted in 1994. Um, there's around 13 hectares, most of it, mostly Shiraz, um, a little bit of Grenache, Viognier, Marsan and Roussan. Um, it's it's a, a friable red brown soil, quite variable. We've got a lot of really hard um, sodic clays in some areas and in other areas we've got very deep soil. So there's quite a bit of soil, there's soil variability within the vineyard, but this vineyard was uh, had a lot of utipa and a lot of issues. Um, so you know these are the re you know the reasons we looked at changing our pruning method. And in 2016, we we worked with Simonith and Cirque. Um, so the vineyard yields and the quality were really suffering at this point. Um, and you know there was really poor growth. Um, utipa was prevalent in all blocks, uh, and you know there were some really big cuts done in the in the early 2000s, um, and they were really you know allowed utipa to get into these vineyards. Um, the spur pruning blocks also, you know, there was a lot of strangulation within the vineyard. Um, and then add on top of that Utipa, we were, the yields have really declined. So we had a bit of work to do. Um, and, you know, we were also ha having to split pick because of the variability within the vineyard. Um, and that, that was sort of increasing our costs and also being an impediment to quality. So if you look at, th this is the Shiraz that was planted in 1994 on this block. This, this vineyard produces a wine called the Descendant Shiraz, which sells for $150 a bottle. Um, and so, you know, it's a very important product for the company. So again, when, when I started, there was a lot of issues um, around with Utipa and, and you can see some of the really big cuts that were made on these vines. Um, and this is where a lot of the problems were starting. Um, some of the work we did with Simit and Serve, we looked at actually what was the outcome of those big cuts. And I think you can see pretty clearly, you know, the Utipa symptoms on the on the on the vine bit there on the on the left. Um, and you can see where Utipa is going to be perfectly happy in the dead wood in those trunks. So you know that that, that was really the outcome of the work, the big cuts that we've done we've done in the past. Um, this is some of the spur pruning section. Um, and you can see there were some big electric snips make big cuts. And again, you can see the Utipa symptoms on the left there. Um, and, and I guess, you know, this is this particular vineyard is, is, is uh, really important. We, we've got opportunity to sell uh, all the Shiraz from this vineyard as descendant Shiraz, but we were having issues with these, these vineyards aren't making that product. So we've got an opportunity, if we can get the, the quality right, to put it all into that product and actually grow the volume of that product. So there was some real incentive for us to, to get these vineyards growing well. So what, what, what actually changed in that time? You know, we, uh, I guess we started working with Simonit Cirque in 2016. And one of the beautiful things about that is that those Simonit Cirque guys worked with our contractors and trained our contractors and my staff on the method. So we, we, we really put a lot of effort into training the guys that were pruning. We also um, have worked with the same gang for the last uh, five years. So we haven't changed contractors. So, and, and when we do, we also train the new staff that come along. So that's really important that you, you know, if you don't supervise, you don't train, you're gonna get, you're not gonna get what you want. Um, we also, uh, in the in the descendant vineyard, we had some areas that were uh, cane pruned or traditionally, and also some that were spur pruned. Um, the spur, we, we began reworking um, some of the spur prune sections because of the utipa. Um, and I'll show you some pictures of that in a minute. Um, so we've been doing a lot of work trying to uh, remove the utipa from the vineyard and by cutting off and, and retraining water shoots. Um, and we are really, this is enabling us to set up, a, a, a getting a better balanced vine. And, you know, certainly in the longer run, what we're seeing when we rework vineyards and start from a, a new start, we're, we're seeing better balance and, and it's certainly decreasing our costs what we've seen, you know, certainly see our, our pruning costs coming down because we there's less cuts being made in the vineyards. We're also seeing once we establish a better balanced vine, we're getting um, more stable yields and, and, and the quality is certainly improving. Um, and just to, to go through that, you can see here, um, I've got a couple of pictures of the, of a, the, the spur prune section of the vineyard. On the left, we've got a vine that we can, we began converting in uh, 2017, and and we really at that stage we'd made a lot of big cuts, 
uh, in these vines in the in previous years to that. And so what we we really this vineyard being such an important vineyard, we didn't want to lose um, full production from this vineyard. So we rather than kneecap the whole vineyard and lose a year of production, uh, we've trained a water shoot up uh, during the you know while the vine's growing. So on the left. You can see there's a, a water shoot being trained up to the wire. Um, and then as that gets established, we'll then remove the, uh, remove the trunk that was existing. So the vine on the right um, really shows how uh, the future, we, we've re-established a, a new trunk. Um, we've re cut the other trunk off and green seal using the Tebiconazole product green seal um, uh, to, to paint the wound. But I guess there's a few points that I want to make about when you do this. Uh, this is a more expensive way of doing it than say kneecapping the vineyard or cutting it off at the dripper line. But we don't. We, we were able to maintain production. Um, unfortunately, we, the quality here is not hasn't made our descendant product yet. But as we as this vineyard gets more established, the vine on the right, um, we are, we're fully confident that we'll be able to maintain that quality. But another point to really look at, the vine on the right, if you look at that, one of the, the great things about reworking vineyards is that we're start, if you look at the way that vine's set up, there's a, two spurs below the canes. Um, there, that's where the future of the vine will grow from. And you can see it's gonna be basically cut the old court, the top of the vine off and, and wrap your cane and spur the bottom, the, the spot on bud, bud and, you're, and you're really done. So. Again, we, we think this is, you know, it's going to be the future for us is not going to be dealing with Utipa because we're not making big cuts. Um, certainly also we will do a bit of shoot thinning on these vines. And, you know, what we're seeing in our younger vineyards is that we're getting a 30% increase in the speed of pruning. Um, and, you know, I think that if we shoot thin this vine, it's around 18 cents a vine to shoot thin. Um, and we can pretty much drop the price from 170 cents a vine or dollar seventy a vine down to about a dollar twenty. So it's it's very beneficial for us from a cost point of view to to get the vine established so that um, that we you know with this method. And again if you look at the sim you know Simnic Circ have been instrumental in training us on how to actually set these vines up. And you know from our perspective it's just it's going to be such an easy um, easy future for these vineyards and we're not going to have to deal with Utipa in the future because we're not making the cuts. So pretty much that's, uh, that's, that's our experience here at Torbrick. Back to you, Robin. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Nigel. What a great I don't know how many minutes that was. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was perfect. Um, thank you. Um, it was really great. It was great to see um, some of your old vines and how you've modified it, modified your pruning practices to give them a new lease on life. Yeah. And also the description of the challenges that you were facing in the descendant vineyard and how you've turned them around was super useful. So it sounds like training and supervision is, is key as well as keeping the same pruning gang as well. You must put on some pretty yeah. good pruning um, barbecues to keep them all happy. Yeah, we do. <laughs> you know, it, 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 one of the difficulties is we use is, is the, la is the uh, language barrier and we're very lucky to have a, a good supervisor who, who translates our work. But um, certainly when you have someone working with the, these guys all the time, and you know, one of the other experiences with this is that, um, that our pruning gang prune for other people, but and so many people have very different views on pruning. Um, so they come back and they go, oh, you know, it's different, but they they actually prefer pruning our vineyard. So mm -hmm. because it's quick, uh, it's easy. They actually like coming back. So we're actually retaining our staff because they actually enjoy pruning these vineyards. Because as you can see, it's a very if I if I scroll back up to um, the young vines um, that I, in one of my slides, that is a really easy vine to prune, um, and, and you know that that is quick and easy, and 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 our, our, our pruners like doing it. So again, mm -hmm. uh, it's certainly some benefits there. So Nigel, just in regards to training, so you said that it's um, really important to have a supervisor. 
um, who can explain, particularly when there's a language barrier, but do you use photos like the one that you've got up on the screen at the moment to really um, show the pruners exactly what you're looking for? Um, yes. We use a lot of visual aids. Yeah, we do. Uh, and we spend a lot of time with them in the field. Um, I mean, when we're working with the Simon and Cert guys in the early, in the first few years, they would spend all their day with our pruning gangs, working with them. Uh, and we would run through presentations with our training, um, with, our, uh, with our contract crew uh, and my team as well. So, um, and then we would, and that would include then shoot thinning uh, as well. So what, again, we spend, when we start pruning, we actually sit down with our contract gang and go back through um, this work that Simon and Cirque did and, and re retrain a lot of people because they do forget and they do, the challenge is that they go and prune for other people that have very different ideas. Mm. So, so, so another, again, question, another question I had. So if you, given that um, shoot thinning is a comp important component to the Simon and Cirque method, do you also get the same gang back to do the shoot thinning and the pruning so that they have a real understanding of how one affects the other? Absolutely. Uh, we actually work with the same gang throughout the year. So uh, at this year, I think we pruned uh, 100, we've got 100 and nearly 150,000 vines to prune um, and 40% and is spur prune and 60% uh, is cane pruned. Um, these guys come back and do the shoot thinning. And also during harvest, the same group of five or six are the core of our picking game. So not only do they, they prune it, they thin it and they pick it. Yeah, so wonderful. Actually quite yeah. A, I mean, not everyone can do that, but it, it is, if you can, uh, and again, if you give them a reason to um, come back, but they, they're easy vines to prune, they make good money and they get to see the, the whole vineyard. It's actually these younger vineyards that we're establishing, you know, the guys love them. They love coming and pruning it. They, they're very proud of their work. So again, mm -hmm. not everyone can do that, but it is, if you can, it, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, wonderful. Um, and just one last question um, that I had, we didn't really touch on um, shoot thinning that much. You did mention that um, the Simonet and Cirque method had, I think you said, reduced your pruning costs by yep. 30%. But oh, 30% quicker to... to oh, 30% quicker, apology. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, when we shoot in, we, it's 30% quicker. You, you prune 30% more vines. Okay, so obviously... It allows you to offer, offer you know, you don't, you, 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 yeah, we're not paying as much for the vine, the actual pruning of the vine. Okay, but the shoot thinning does add a cost. Yes. Um, and obviously the timing that you do the shoot thinning affects how um, quick and easy it is and therefore, yes. the, therefore the cost. But I'm sure there's also a benefit to wine quality from that shoot thinning as well. Yes, yeah, we, we're certainly seeing, you know, when we, when we talk about quality, we're seeing brighter hues, we're seeing uh, better fruit flavours, uh, we're ripening earlier. So we're actually, there's less risk uh, in, in terms of hang time. But, uh, you know, certainly the, the, when we look at the wines on the bench, we, we've actually done this uh, in Vintage 2021 where we've actually um, harvested the shoot thin versus the non-shoot thin. Um, and the, the, again, the, the structure of the wine is better, the flavour and the colour. So we're actually seeing an advantage, a, a benefit of that. And, you know, in reality, you can probably, uh, by not having excess shoots and crowding and, and all those sort of things, your, your risks of, of disease are less. And also you're seeing, you know, all those other benefits from it. But, yeah, the, the quality, there is a, a slight drop in yield, but, um, you know, it's not significant at the end of the day. Mm. And is it mainly due to a reduction in the variability across um, not only the vineyard but the yeah. vine from that shoot thinning? Yeah, absolutely. And and I think that's one of the the other things that um, you really got to understand about the the training that we get we we had with Simon and Cirque is about training our guys to look at the vine um, balance and look at the growth of the vine and only prune to the growth of the vine. So if the vine here in front of us was 
uh, not, wasn't as strong as this one, we may have only left a one bud spur or a, only one cane. So at, we're training our people to prune to the vigour of the vine, which is hard to describe, but um, when you get your pruners doing that, you're getting good growth that's, a, that's um, appropriate for that vine's health. So in our descendant vineyard, we've very much seen the weakest areas where the soil is the poorest are still producing a healthy canopy, not as much fruit, but it's ripening at a similar rate to the other the parts of the vineyard. So again, it, it, it helped, it, you know, by understanding the pruning, you, you, you're getting a better outcome all over. So you, you're still maintaining the health of the vine. And, and, you know, with the old vineyards, if you look at um, uh, these old vineyards, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're more difficult to prune, but, you know, understanding how they grow and, you know, we, we're getting uniformity in these vineyards, which is difficult, but, you know, because the, the, the people understand what they're pruning, that they're, we're getting a better outcome all around with these vineyards. And we're building up with these old vineyards, we're building up healthy wood. So we're building up healthy sap flow to the canes as much as possible. There's a lot of, you know, dead wood in these vineyards. But when you actually uh, establish the, the, the vine and where it's growing from, you're, you're, each year you're building up more growing tissue, living tissue, uh, and so the vines are getting uh, are growing more healthily. So ideally, they're going to be there. You know, the longevity of the vineyard is going to be there for you know a, a lot better in the long run. Wonderful. Yeah, I love that photo. Thank you for sharing. Uh, excellent. We could talk about this all day, given that it's um, such an important part of vineyard management. Um, we really appreciate you um, being a part of this webinar, Nigel, and for your presentation. Thank no you. Worries. All right, thank you, Robin.